While herd health is always a top priority for members of the beef cattle industry, but new restrictions on the purchase and even use of certain antibiotics could have an impact on how you care for your cattle. Joining us now is Dr. Kathy Simmons, Chief Veterinarian at NCBA. And Dr. Simmons, the Food and Drug Administration is announcing that several key medically important antibiotics will go from being available over the counter to requiring a prescription. Why is this change even occurring? Yes, this change is occurring because it's part of FDA's uh, plan for judicious use of antimicrobial drugs. And they're doing this through their guidance uh, process. Uh, back in uh, 2012, they did guidance for industry 209. In 2013, they did guidance for industry 213. And these two guidances stated that the medically important antimicrobial drugs could not be used for growth promotion, but needed to be used for uh, prevention control and treatment of disease. Also, uh, it, they stated that uh, these medically important antimicrobial drugs should be under veterinary oversight or obtained through veterinary consultation. And if you remember back in uh, Guidance for Industry 213, this took the medically important uh, antimicrobial drugs that were in feed and water and made them uh, obtainable through a veterinary feed directive or in the case of water through a prescription. We're talking now about the remaining 4% of these medically important antimicrobial drugs which will be taken from their over-the-counter status and the labels will be changed by the drug companies to say that they do require a veterinary uh, prescription. As I said, this is part of their antimicrobial stewardship program and their strategic plan that they put out in 2018 for antimicrobial stewardship in veterinary settings. How should cattle producers prepare for this shift from over-the-counter to prescription antibiotics? Well, the first step is awareness, you know, and that's why we're here. We're trying to tell people this is going to happen. And so that those 4% of the antimicrobials, things like oxytetracycline injectable, sulfa boluses, some of the intramammary infusions, penicillin uh, injectable, are going to no longer be able to be purchased over the counter or through catalog distributors without a veterinary prescription. So that means that these labels are being changed, and this has hap been happening over a two-year period of time. This first came out in 2021 with implementation by June of 2023. So these products will not just be taken off the shelves at that time, but they will no longer become available. So they will go out just by supply and demand. Dr. Simmons, explain why it's so important for cattle producers to have a good relationship with their veterinarian. I think it's important uh, because, of course, the veterinarian is the person who's going to help you with your herd health program, with a lot of programs that you need, and having a veterinary client-patient relationship will allow you to obtain products if you have an agreed-upon protocol with your veterinarian. Some of these very simple uh, diseases that have been treated by uh, producers using some of these products, uh, you can establish a, a treatment protocol with your veterinarian so he or she is aware of how you're going to be using these products, and I'm sure uh, you can work out a way to obtain them through the veterinarian. And finally, another very important issue for cattle producers is the threat of foreign animal diseases like foot and mouth disease. What is NCBA doing right now to help protect the cattle industry from these type of threats? NCBA works really on two fronts to protect against foot and mouth disease. We work through our policy and advocacy arm in Washington, D.C., and there we become involved with USDA's National Training and Exercise Program for Preparedness Activities, as well as advocate for um, the resources that we need in case of an FMD outbreak. And by that I mean, in the last Farm Bill in 2018, we were able to get animal health provisions, one of which was a National Animal Vaccine and Veterinary Countermeasures Bank, which we call the FMD Bank. And this bank um, is for a national FMD vaccine uh, storage, so that in the case of an outbreak, we would have vaccine uh, that was readily available to use. Uh, we hope to uh, renew uh, this funding at a higher level in the upcoming Farm Bill. 
And the other arm that we have that works is the producer education arm. And that works through the Beef Quality Assurance Program. And we, uh, in the Beef Quality Assurance Program, we support biosecurity measures for your individual farm. We even have a biosecurity template uh, in BQA that you can use or the producer can use uh, with their veterinarian to establish a biosecurity plan uh, to protect against both domestic and foreign animal diseases. Dr. Simmons, thank you so much for your time and all you do for the U.S. beef cattle industry. Thank you. Don't forget, every day NCBA staff in Washington, D.C. and Denver work to protect the interests of cattle producers all across the country. Join in the fight to protect our way of life by becoming a member. And it's easy to do. Just call 1-866-233-3872 or visit the website ncba.org.